Hey, how's it going? And welcome to this lesson about MIDI step recording in Ableton Live. MIDI step recording is a workflow that I use in situations where I don't want to record along with a click or a guide track. Maybe situations where like a melody is too difficult to play or too rangy to fit on my MIDI keyboard or my push. Or maybe situations where there's just too, the, the chords have too many notes for me to play. Or maybe a drum pattern that uh, requires a lot of rhythmic precision that I can't achieve on my MIDI controller. So then I'll go into uh, step record where I can just step along at my own pace through the music and add notes. Uh, before I dive into this, let's just take a quick look at the software and the hardware that's in use for this demo. Um, this is Ableton Suite version 10.1 running on a Macintosh. And I have a, a MIDI keyboard. You could use a push or anything that makes MIDI notes. I have my computer keyboard here. And I also have uh, a sustain pedal. You could use any foot switch for this. Uh, incidentally, this workflow, MIDI Step Record, is the same on previous versions and other editions of Ableton Live, and it's the same in Windows. Uh, in fact, it's the same in Session View as it is in the Arrangement View, but I'm going to work in Arrangement View today. So, having covered all of those things, let's do just a quick review of some navigational things. And they, I'll be fast because it's stuff that you already know. Um, the browser window you're going to need today in order to access devices to make new tracks. So one way to get there really quickly, Option Command B opens the browser window up and that's a toggle. So if you Option Command B again, it goes away. Uh, Option Command L brings up the detail view down here and Shift Tab toggles the detail view from showing the clip as it's showing now to showing the device, if there are any. And it's a toggle, so shift tab switches back. And again, option command L is the toggle to make it come or go, depending on what state you're starting in. Just some quick navigational things. As we saw earlier, tab switches back and forth between session view and the arrangement view. We're gonna work in the arrangement view today. Um, making new tracks, making new clips, this is something you've already done. Uh, you can just drag a device from the browser into your arrangement to make a new track and it'll install that device on it. That's one, one of the easiest ways to do it. So we'll do some of that right now because we want to dive right into this thing. So I'm going to add a drum track with this device that I have saved in my favorites. I'm dragging it right into the middle part of my arrangement and Ableton has created a track for that and installed the drum device on it. You'll also notice if you look over here to the right side of your screen, you can see that Ableton by default has armed the track to record. That's good. We need to make a MIDI clip in which to record. So I'm going to select a small region and create a short little clip where I want the drums to come in on this song. I selected one measure. Now I'm going to click on Shift Command M on my keyboard and a new region is created or a new MIDI clip as we say in Ableton Live. As you can see here in the MIDI clip we have along the top those are the beat numbers locations along the horizontal row on the top and over here on the left side you can see this sort of piano keyboard kind of vertical thing indicating and in fact since the tracks armed I'm able to play notes and you see that they light up red over there to show which ones I'm playing. There's my kick, there's my snare, there's my hat. Um, another thing I'll point out is that if you look just above that piano keyboard there is a blue circle with headphones that is the preview switch that has to be engaged it has to be turned blue as it is now for a MIDI step record to work. I can click anywhere inside that clip to place the insertion mark and I can use the right and left arrows of my computer keyboard 
to move one step at a time forwards or backwards through the MIDI clip. Now right now you might be wondering to yourself, well, how far is a step? What is that amount? And if I point your attention over here, down on the bottom right of the screen, you can see where it says 1 slash 64. That means that the, the current grid is a 64th note. That's a pretty small step, but nice if you're doing very fine, detailed, rhythmic things. Uh, you'll also notice if you zoom in, the grid adjusts itself according to the zoom. Uh, you'll probably need to go to the options menu and make yourself familiar with the narrow grid and widened grid commands to really get what you want out of that grid size. Command 1, Command 2. Command 2 will make this more coarse grid. Here's now it's at 1 8 note after hitting Command 2 a couple times. And Command 3 turns it into 8th note triplets, which is what I want for this drum beat. Now when I move the insert marker, it's moving by 8th note triplets. And I'm going to start at the beginning where my drum beat starts. I'm going to press a note on my MIDI keyboard. This is the C that is the, the kick drum of this sound. I'm holding down that note and I'm going to press the right arrow on my computer keyboard. And you can see that a note has been drawn in that is an 8th note triplet long. And that's a kick. If I release that, that kick drum note and then click the right arrow again, I just move without inserting anything. There's a rest. Again, I'll, I'll press down the note and click the right arrow, and I've inserted another note. If I find it this time that I don't want the note where I just put it, I can hold the note on my MIDI keyboard and use the left arrow to move backwards and erase it. You can also use that to adjust durations just holding the note and moving the right and left arrow key. You'll also notice if I press lightly and insert a note, right arrow, that the velocity is recorded while I'm doing this too. So I can get I keep a humanized feel to things because I'm, I'm actually using velocity to get different dynamics while I go. Just one more kick here. And how about some snare? I'm going to need a hi-hat pattern. Again, I'm holding a note on the MIDI keyboard, using the right arrow to insert that note. Then without holding any notes on the MIDI keyboard, moving the, using the right arrow to the next place I want to enter a note, holding down the right note on the keyboard, right arrow, remembering that if I at strike with a lot of velocity, it'll record with that amount of velocity. Let's solo this track and see what it sounds like. Oh, that's not bad. In fact, let's just let that pull that loop out and listen with the track. Okay, well, we're off to a good start here, but I think we need a melody. So let's get a new track. In the browser, in my favorites list, I have a flute synth that I'm going to drag into the arrangement view. A new track is created. Uh, if you look there on the right side, you can see that it's armed. I should be able to play notes on it. I should be able to select a region and make oh, I'm going to actually select an even longer region this is a 16 bar melody so let me select all 16 bars shift command M gives me a new MIDI clip to work with by the way you your view may look might look a little different than this one right now you might be seeing the note panel and the envelopes panel, which are controlled down over here at the bottom, those two yellow buttons toggle the view of those. I just like to conserve screen real estate here and look at the whole clip, especially a long 16 bar clip like this. So again, click anywhere 
you want to in the clip to start. I, uh, you can use the right and left arrows to navigate to wherever your melody begins. My melody is going to begin right at the beginning. I'll also take a note here. If I look down in the right hand corner, you can see it says 1-4. That means we're at a quarter note resolution for the grid, which is actually appropriate for the melody I'm entering. Quarter notes are the smallest unit of time in my melody, so that should work out just fine. I hold my first note on the MIDI keyboard, and I use the right arrow to insert it. I'm actually going to click the right arrow twice because I need a half note. I'm going to continue this way, selecting the next note, and then using the right arrow to insert it. You can click the right arrow as many times as I need to to get the right duration of the note. I can press the notes with the correct velocity, louder or softer. Let's see what this melody sounds like. I'm going to solo the track. Hmm. This A sharp over here, it sounds too short to me. The duration's wrong. So I can navigate back there to somewhere in the middle of that note select the note on my MIDI keyboard and use left and right arrows to adjust the duration. There, that sounds right to me. Cool. Well, something we haven't talked about is chords and overlapping notes very much. So, Let's put an electric piano track in here and do a little bit with that. I'm dragging in an electric piano sound from my browser. Ableton has created a track and armed it. I'm just gonna make a, uh, a new clip. I'm gonna select a region. Shift Command M creates a new clip. If you look along the top there, you can see it's eight measures long, what I've created. If you look over here at the left side, you can see that the preview switch is enabled. I should be able to just play and hear things. That's good. Now, I'm going to play some chords. I'm going to play a bunch of notes at the same time. Maybe some rolling chords where notes kind of sound like this, you know. And I need two hands to do that. So I need to figure out another way to operate the left and right arrow on the computer keyboard to advance and move back and forth to enter the notes. And Ableton allows us to do this by mapping a controller to those functions. So let me enter the MIDI mapping mode. And take note, if you look over here on the left side of the, the MIDI clip now editor, you can see these two arrows, the step record, advance, arrows. If you select one of them and then click on your foot switch, it assigns that foot switch to that arrow. You can click on MIDI to go back into the regular mode. And what, now you should be able to just click on the switch in order to advance the way you were doing before with the right arrow. And that frees up your right hand to play more. So let's try this out. I'm going to play, since it's a rolling chord, I'm going to start off with just the first note. And then while I'm still holding it down, I'm going to add some more notes to it. And I'm going to switch. 
switch to triplet eighth notes, command three, start another chord here. Add some more notes to it. Holding down the notes that started it at the same time. And one more chord. See what this sounds like. Alright, so we did a drum pattern using MIDI step record, we added a melody, and now we've added some rolling chords, all using MIDI step record, stepping through the clip one step at a time and adding notes freely without having to record in time to the click. I think one last thing I'd like to just give you a look at is how this workflow might look if you were in session view while you're doing it. It's pretty much the same, but just so you can see what it looks like, tab key to move to the session view. You can see that the track, the electric piano track, is still armed over here. I can click on a cell and shift command M makes a new clip in that cell. Click anywhere in the new MIDI clip. Navigate with the left and right arrows. Add notes with your push or your MIDI controller. Voila. All right. I hope you have some fun with MIDI Step Record. I hope it enhances your creative experience, and I'll see you next time.